All right, 7.5, connections to discrete random variables. Now, a continuity correction is a correction that's applied when using the normal approximation to correct for the difference between the discrete and continuous distribution. Okay, so what this is saying is literally, <coughs> excuse me, normally when we have a continuous function, we can determine information for probability and stuff like that. But when you have a dis so when you have a discrete function, again, there would be a histogram involved where the va the values aren't necessarily definitely not uh, continuous. What happens is that there is an allowable uh, uh, you can d use the information we know about continuous to determine for discrete random variables by using a concept that we've talked about in this course and that is when we find the midpoints <coughs> and we determine that a normal approximation to the curve and that normal approximation we're able to find out the information that we need. Now again folks there's some conditions placed on this and we're going to look at that in just a second. Alright so the normal approximation for a binomial distribution is usually considered reasonable if the values of n times p is greater than 5 and n times q is greater than 5. Now, what that means is that if I know it's a binomial distribution, either, <coughs> and if you remember a binomial distribution was something where we're just comparing two values, either it happens or it doesn't happen. And the number of values times the probability of that actually happening is greater than 5. And the number of possibilities times Q is greater than 5. And remember Q is if it, the incident is not happening. So P is the probability of it actually happening. And Q is the probability of it not happening. And if you, those products are both greater than 5, then we can say that the normal approximation that we can use is reasonable to use because of the fact that this condition is applied. We're going to see an example of that. Now, the normal approximation for a hypergeometric distribution is usually considered reasonable if the sample size is small compared to the size of the population, i.e., the number that we're checking, the sample size, is less than one-tenth of the actual population. So n is the sample size and np is the size of the population. So as long as the sample size is less than 10% of the actual size of the population, then we can say that a normal approximation for a hypergeometric distribution is considered reasonable. All right, let's look at examples. Example one. The probability of <coughs> rolling a 6 on a weighted die is 0 0.25. Now this die is rolled 25 times. Is it reasonable to approximate this distribution and give reasons? Part B, determine the mean and standard deviation of the normal approximation. And Part C, determine the probability that the die will show a 6 fewer than 8 times. So, first part we're going to determine is, is it reasonable to determine a normal approximation? Well, nor, uh, um, n times p, remember, has to be greater than 5. So if we take n, which is the number of times it was rolled, 25, times the probability of that 6 actually happening, which is 0 0.25, we get a number of 6.25. Now, if we take the, pro, uh, the number of times something happens and, time, and multiply that by the probability of not getting a 6, which is 0 0.75, we get an answer of 18.75. Looking at these two values, we note that both of these are greater than 5. And since NP is greater than 5 and NQ is greater than 5, it is reasonable to approximate this distribution. 
So even though the result here would indicate a, nor a um, discrete random variables here, well, we because we're able to determine that uh, the information we need is greater than a specific value, we can, so in, in this case, NP and NQ are both greater than 5, we can use a normal approximation to figure out the probability. Part B says, the mean <coughs> of this particular value is basically N times P, which is 6.25. The standard deviation is going to be N times P times Q. So N is 25 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.75. And that gives us a value of 2.1651. So we have the mean and the standard deviation. Part C says determine the probability that the die will show us 6 fewer than 8 times. So we need to calculate the z-score, which is the value we want, which is <coughs> fewer than 8 means 7.5. Now remember, we're not going to say 7 times. We need to pick 7.5. Why 7.5, you might be asking? Fewer than 8. Remember that this turns out to be a, f a frequency uh, histogram, if we were to graph this. And a frequency histogram has bars. What we do with the bars is find the midpoint of those bars. So the midpoint between 7 and 8 is 7.5. So we're actually going to use 7.5 as our approximation. So 7.5 minus 6.25 over 2.1651. So again, the value we want, which is 7.5, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, gives us a z-score of 0 0.5783, which is approximately 0 0.58. So the probability of scoring less than or equal to 7.5, so less than 8 times, is going to be a value of 0 0.7190. So a 71.9% chance that folks, were, you can score, the die will show six fewer than eight times uh, when you roll it 25 times. Okay, moving on. Example number two. Allison has a drawer full of unmatched socks. The drawer contains 30 blue socks, 30 green socks, and 30 yellow socks. She pulls 7 socks from the drawer and records the number of blue socks in the sample. Is it reasonable to approximate this distribution with a normal distribution? Give a reason. Part B. Determine the mean and standard deviation of the normal approximation and what is the probability that three, four, or five of the socks are blue. So let's go over this again. So we're going to go through this really slowly. Part A. <coughs> okay, so this is part B here, folks. And I'll show you part A in a second. And I'll explain part B in just a minute while I look for part A. Part A has found a new place right now. There it is. So. What we need to do is, is it reasonable to approximate this distribution? We know that there's a population of 90, so there are 90 socks occupying this drawer. And we need to determine, is the sample size small enough? I.e., is the sample is 7, we're pulling 7 socks from the drawer. Is it less than or equal to 1 tenth of 90? Yes, it is, folks. That's what the check mark is there for. Therefore, it is reasonable to approximate the distribution with a normal distribution. Now, determine the mean and standard deviation. To determine the mean, we basically take it's the sample times the probability of it occurring. So we have 30 blue socks over 90 total socks, which is going to be 2.3333. So this is the mean. The standard deviation is equal to n, the number of socks we pull, which is 7, times 30 over 90, times 60 over 90. Now we have to multiply this, okay? And that is the population minus the probability of it actually happening over 60 minus 1, okay? 
So, NP minus, sorry, not probability of it actually happening, but what we're actually doing here is if it's NP minus 1, on the top it's going to be NP minus 6. All right, now, why is it's NP, sorry, um, just a moment. All right, folks. What is the probability that three, four, or five socks are blue? There was a little correction made, so let's look at this. First of all, to calculate the mean, it is that you take the n times the p, and you get 7 times 30 over 90. There are 30 blue socks over 90 pairs of 90 random socks available, and we're choosing from that sample 7. So our mean is going to be 2.3333. Next, what we have to calculate is the standard deviation. Standard deviation is n times p times q multiplied by np minus n all over np minus 1. Okay, sorry about that folks. So when we look at this, here we go. To calculate the standard deviation, we're looking at the uh, little sigma is equal to n times p times q multiplied by the total population minus what we're choosing divided by the total population minus 1. So this is a formula which we use to calculate the probability of a hypergeometric problem. Now, looking at this, we have 7 times 30 over 90 is the possibility of getting blue, 60 over 90 is the complement, multiplied by 90, which is the total number of socks, minus 7 over 90 minus 1, which gives us an approximation of 1.2044. That is an approximation of the standard deviation. Now, what we're going to do is use that to answer part C. That is, part C says, what is the probability that 3, 4, 5 of the socks are blue? Well, we want to know when x is between 2.5 and 5.5, and that will include all the possibilities of 3, 4, and 5. Well, to approximate this, we need to find the z-score. The z-score for 5.5 is 5.5 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which gives us 2.6293 find the z-score for 2.5 and we get 2.5 minus 2.3333 divided by the standard deviation and that gives us 0 0.1384. We check these z-scores into the table on page 480 to 481. So same thing again. Check page 480 to 481 and we get for 2.6293, so 2.63 we get a z-score of about 0 0.9957 and we check 0 0.1384 which is 0 0.14 and we get 0 0.5557 so that gives us an approximation of 44 percent probability and again it's an approximation now if we remember back in chapter 4.5 we actually use uh, we use combinations to determine the probability of three, four, or five blue socks being chosen. Let's see if we get the same value, or at least close, because remember these are approximations. So when we calculate these values, so we have 30 blue socks, we're choosing three, times the remaining socks, choose four, all over 90, choose seven, and then again 30 choose four, times 60 choose three, divide by 90 choose seven, plus 30 choose 5, plus 60 choose 2, over 90 choose 7, we get an approximation of the probability to be about 0 0.4243. So these two values, although they may look very different, they're pretty close to each other. The probabilities are off by about 1.6%. It's not a lot when we think about in terms of the probability of choosing something. 1.6% is not a lot to have to worry about. Okay, folks, well, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.